Welcome back to another episode of Billionaire's Beginnings. In episode two, we grinded the CEO crate business so that we could afford a Kasatka submarine. And in today's video, we're gonna be doing our first ever KO Perico heist. Now, although robbing El Rubio is almost as easy as a PC modder hack in your account, that is not the main reason why we are taking all of his lunch money today. The main reason we are doing this is because we need to make $2 million in this episode so that we can afford our next big purchase for the series. Now, the first order of business is to get out of our CEO attire and into something a little bit more comfortable and fitting for the occasion. Yes, my quads are jacked. I have been working on them. Thank you for noticing. But with that being said, let's get into our first ever KO Preco heist. Now, unfortunately, the footage for our first ever heist got messed up. So we're going to treat our second ever run as if it's our first. But I will say the first time you go through it, you will have to first go over to the music locker and you're going to have a little cutscene. Once you've done that, you're then going to go purchase the submarine for 2.2 million and finally visit Kale Preco for the very first time to do your first scope missions. Now for this episode, I'm going to treat our run as if we're doing this all over again, but I will say we did make a good chunk of change on our first time through. We made about $2.4 million. But on our second run, of course, like you would for every other one, we start off by doing the mission where we have to steal the plane that will take us to the Keo Perigo Island. Now, I don't have a sparrow. I didn't want to spend any of the money we made and make it as relatable as possible as our first run. So we don't have the sparrow helicopter, which really helps. But when you come up to shore, all you could do is just request the dinghy, hop in the dinghy and get to where you need to. It's pretty simple. So for the first one, for the Vela mission, all we're doing is hopping in the dinghy, getting over there, take out any enemies that are around them and then hopping into the plane and flying off across the map until we get to the checkpoint to get to the Keo Perico Island. Now our first time on the island, you're actually gonna start off in this area here. And all you gotta do is we're gonna head to the same place that we normally would when we're getting through the island for the initial scope out. You're gonna have to get through these gates here and head over to a certain spot on the map. It's gonna show you, just follow all of the different icons that they do. Getting around the island isn't that difficult, just so long as you get past the first gate and then you get a vehicle you could drive around and take as long as you want. There is no rush. You're eventually gonna have to scope out a few places at the north dock. That's just mandatory. For our heist, we're actually gonna focus on the places that we need to scope out. That's the most important thing because there's only a few places you need to scope out for the exact route that I personally take. So the first place to scope out is going to be the main dock. Now, once you've gone to the communications tower, you've done the hack, you've figured out what the primary loot was, and this time we got the pink diamond. Obviously the first time it'll be the Madrazo files, but we got really lucky, a $1.3 million primary loot that is insane, big money. We could maybe afford a couple Big Macs after this one. We scope out that primary loot and then you're gonna head down the mountain towards the main dock on the map. And the main dock is not really guarded that well, so it shouldn't be too difficult. At this point, you should have a vehicle. You're gonna head down there, get over to the main dock and take a picture of the main dock. This is gonna allow you to use it as an infiltration point which is extremely important and we'll talk about that later on. Then you should take one of the boats that are there, drive over around the island until you get to the point where you're right in front of the compound. And all you gotta do is just drive up close to the cliff and you'll get a notification telling you that you scoped out the drainage tunnel. You don't have to go underwater, just drive close to it. It'll give you the notification in the bottom left-hand corner and you are good to go. So we got the main dock and we have the drainage tunnel. Those are the two scouting points that we really need for the heist or at least that I need for my method. And if you'd like to follow it, feel free to do so. I find it's really simple and easy. Any level of player can do it. But those are the two scope outs. When it comes to secondary loot, I don't bother scoping them out because we're going to go to a place that essentially guarantees we'll get our full loot bags and we'll talk more about that later on. So the approach vehicle I use is the long fin. And what I found is very efficient is if you park up the submarine right next to Vespucci Beach, hop out, hop in a dinghy, take the route that I took here, and you're gonna get up to the helipad. And when you get there, then you could use any of the helicopters that are there. It makes things a lot easier instead of trying to go to shore 
get your motorcycle or car or whatever and go from there. So since we don't have a, uh, a helicopter, this really helps us out. But with this mission, you're gonna have to go fly to the police station. Once you get there, it's then gonna prompt you of a bunch of different places on the city that you could get some cabs, uh, these trucks. You're gonna go pick up one of them and take it over to the police station because we'll need it. Now, ADHD moment of this episode. <laughs> Last episode, it was me being fascinated with my reflection. Today, it was uh, trying to hit stunt jumps with this thing. And I hit one and it did not end up so well. So, you know, big time waster is what it is. Grabbed another one, headed back over to the police station. And then all you gotta do is just angle it so that when you drive into the station, of course the cops are gonna be on you, start shooting at you. So angle yourself away so that you're not facing all the cops. It hooks up to the trailer, start heading out. I highly suggest putting this location on the map because that's where you're gonna have to go. And then the ending of this mission is pretty simple. You just gotta drive away, get rid of the cops. You can't call up Lester to get rid of them. So you're gonna have to find a new way, whether it be, uh, for me, it was just driving. When I was driving, eventually the cops never caught me and I lost my wand level. You could also, once you're no longer on the cops radar, uh, hop out of the car and unalive yourself. And that would just get rid of the cops, hop back in the truck and deliver it. Doesn't matter how you do it, but that is the first setup mission. Pretty simple, probably like 10 to 15 minutes total. Next up is the first equipment setup. Now we have the plasma cutter in this case scenario because we have the pink diamond. For the first time through ever, you're gonna have the Madrazo file. So it's actually gonna be the safe code at the casino. The casino job is really simple. You go there, take out enemies, head into a like penthouse, take out the head of security, get his codes and then you take off like it's these missions are very very simple so don't stress over them if you are new but for this one of course we have to fast travel to get there quicker uh, i highly suggest doing that with the kasaka submarine it gets you around the map very quickly so we fast travel there once again we got to use the dinghy because we don't have a sparrow and this mission is fairly simple we first start by going to a like safe house where we scope out some plans take a picture of some plans and then we head over to a location where we're gonna pick up the plasma cutter. We're gonna have to fight off some enemies, but once we do that, we bring it back to the submarine and we're all good for that setup. The next one is the fingerprint cloner. Once again, simple one. I'm still using the same method of getting into the dinghy, heading over to the helipad and using the helicopter to get around places. Keep in mind though, it disappears once you go into a building and come back out. So you'll have to use your bike or whatever vehicle you have after that. But I was just doing that to make it simpler. The fingerprint cloner, you just go to a building. We had to turn off the security system here on the side of the building, hop in, take out some enemies, hack a laptop. And then we're gonna head over to another safe house where we end up picking up the fingerprint cloner and coming back to Kasaka. Very simple. Each of these missions are taking like, they're maybe closer to 10 minutes because I don't have a sparrow. If they were, if I had a sparrow, it would take like five minutes max. Uh, they're very, very quick and simple. And then the final setup for the equipment, of course, is the cutting torch where we just head over to a construction site, put on the hard hat. I highly suggest doing that because then you could run around and not get in trouble with any of the enemies there or any of the security. Go through all the different toolboxes to see which one has the cutting torch take the cutting torch and bring it back. And we are done for the equipment setups. Now the only setup we have left is going to be our weapons loadout. And I'm just going with aggressor. It makes it very simple. Now, if you load into this mission and you see Meriwether HQ, log into a new session, go into a new invite only session, skip that one, that one's horrible. Any other version of your weapons loadout mission is perfectly fine. So for us, we just got one of the, I think it's like Schlager, whatever buildings downtown. I don't know how to pronounce that, but we got that building. I head up to the rooftop, go in through there, take out the enemies. Once again, we have another laptop hack to do, picked up the equipment and then took off. These missions are fairly simple, not too complicated. This whole process probably took me around like an hour just because we don't have a fast vehicle and we got to take the dinghy back and forth everywhere. Plus there will be times where you get off a couple times is what it is. That is all of these setups done. And now for the first time in the series, we're gonna have some live 
commentary of us doing the finale. Let's get into it. All right, boys, it is time to take El Rubio for all of his lunch money. We are ready to do the finale. So we're going to go through what our setup is. Luckily, we got the pink diamond, which is a big, big win because that's going to get us an extra few hundred thousand dollars compared to every other primary target that we could have. So our approach vehicle, of course, is the long fin. We scouted out the main dock as our infiltration point. We're going to use that because we want to go to the airstrip first. The compound entry point, of course, is the drainage tunnel. Our escape point does not matter whatsoever. Time of day, I always go day because it makes it easier to see stuff. And then the weapon loadout, of course, we have aggressor and we're gonna put suppressors on our guns. Now we are ready to go. I'm excited. Let's make some big money. We have the, So we got 1.3 million as our primary target. We're probably gonna get about $400,000 in secondary loot. And then we get the elite challenge plus money from the safe. This could be a big, big KO Perico heist run. So we start off here with the long fin. We're immediately gonna take a sharp left turn Use the right bumper to help yourself make a sharper. Oh, that's. Oh, shit. That's not looking good. So I may have gone just a little too far out. We actually want to usually I hop over that portion of rocks there, but we're going to get around these and we're going to head straight for the airstrip. Now, this part's fairly simple. We don't have to do much. There are two different loot locations that we could get stuff. The first loot location should be enough. Um, I usually park the boat just over here, just in front of this rock. Because sometimes it drifts back and it catches it. All right. We're going to hop out. Don't worry if, if the boat drifts all the way out into the water. It really doesn't matter. What's more important is that you don't let the boat come up onto shore. Because if that happens, then it can actually disappear. And we don't want that. So it's best to have it further out in the water than gone now we're gonna head over here we're gonna hop into the hangar this hangar is gonna have three different loot spawns you could kill this security guard but i just let him go i want to be i guess as peaceful as possible i'm already taking them for all their money so no need in wasting unaliving anybody that we don't need to we're gonna take the stuff in here so we got cash and we got some grass let's see so the best ones, I believe, is the Coca-Cola and the cash. The grass is okay. I have a feeling we're going to end up getting Coca-Cola up top. And we took this for no reason, but... And I think earlier I said there's three loot spawns, but there's actually four in here. I never check these before I do the heist. I always just go into it um, blindly. Because some people I know stress out about making sure you take the exact right loot, but it'll probably, the difference is like maybe 50K max. So who really cares? Not that big of a deal. We're not, okay. We're not gonna go over here, pick up the forklift, and we are going to pick up some of these boxes over here so that we can get up top. So let's get good, lift it up a little bit, almost tipped us. And then we're gonna head over here. We're gonna put it all the way up and just ram that right into the wall. Come around the back, hop up on top. Oh shit, let's get on top of this thing. I don't know why my, okay, cool. So now we're up top and just cash. Wait, no, is that Coca-Cola? No, yeah, cash. So we're gonna fill up our loot bag here. We got lucky, there was four spawns. If you don't get enough money, there is another spawn just across the way from here in the airstrip. Um, it's in one of the shacks. Maybe we'll see it in another run that I do. We're gonna get probably about 400,000 out of this, which isn't great. Like I think the max I've ever gotten is 450, closer to even $500,000 just from the secondary loot. So 377 is definitely not ideal, but it is what it is. So, pop down here, let the dollies fly a little bit, and now we're going to book it. There's the guard. Oh, wait, that was close. So, be careful. Let this guy walk past. If we had unalived him, we wouldn't have to worry about this, but like I said, 
We're already taking them for all their lunch money, so let's be a little bit kind and uh, let this guy off the hook. Okay, so we're gonna run back out here. Our boat is probably gonna be way out in the water. So we'll have to go for a, a little swim, but that's okay. Okay, not that bad, not that bad. Also, if you guys don't know, swimming underwater, always faster. And then you get equipped the, the rebreathers. It's left on the D-pad. Um, it changes from platform to platform, but left for us. They just allow you to breathe longer underwater. And we will need them later on anyways, so. Okay, back at the long fin. Now we're gonna head over to the compound entry point, which is the drainage tunnel. That's how we're gonna get in. We're gonna get in, take the primary loot, and then leave. All right, so we have reached the drainage tunnel. All right, so I find just going by these grates, going over it roughly three times each way, takes it out, and now we are ready to enter the compound. Now, entering the compound or being in the compound is probably the hardest part of the entire heist, even though it's still not difficult. So just for those of you who may be just getting back into GT5 recently, um, or are new to GT5, the before the guards would would not spot you what's going on here the guards couldn't spot dead bodies um so you could kill guards in the compound anywhere on the island and if someone one of them walked past another another's dead body it would be fine uh but now they can spot people which makes it a little bit more difficult because some of them have different routes that go past where you would have taken these guys out so um this time we're just gonna go through it and we're not gonna take out anybody. So there's a very easy route. We're gonna run here, run to the left over that little railing. We're gonna run to the left here again. And then we are ready here. We're now at the final building. We'll get a little bit of footage here for that. We're gonna wait for this guard up here at the top to look to the left, good. And now we're gonna run over here. Now, don't be too worried about these guys. Like you could just literally just sneak up behind them. Give them a little like, uh, hey bud, how you doing bud? You know what I'm saying? Not too difficult. These guys seem to be deaf and blind, so we're good to go. And then we are going to get up here and wait for this guard to come down the stairs. You can take him out, but there is a chance that when you take him out, you make enough noise that it alerts another guard. So I personally just leave it and don't bother. So we're gonna run behind him. And now we are in the office and the, I would say the hard part of this is done so we're gonna open the safe take the money from the safe 455 okay so that was a decent amount of money we'll take it and now we got to do this fingerprint hack now this is really simple um, so you're gonna see there's multiple panels and you just got to line it up start from the very beginning match it to the the full fingerprint on the right so one two you can literally just count it out. So I'll show you guys here on the next one. So this is the first panel, that's one. We now go to the first panel, one, move over to the right one, two, and then you just keep going through. So one, this is one, two, three, four, five, right? Yeah. Boom. Simple as that, not difficult whatsoever. Three, done. If you're doing it on hard mode, it will be four, but three is it for us. That's on the regular mode. And now we're heading into the basement. By the way, the way to get hard mode is you have to, once completing the heist, there's gonna be a cooldown for solo players like us. It is about two and a half hours. If you do the heist again within a 45 minute window after that cooldown ends, you will activate hard mode. And it gives a 10% buff on all the money you make, which is really good, uh, but it also, adds a fingerprint hack it really doesn't actually change much to be honest um i think there's a few more guards but it does not affect the route that we take whatsoever so this is going to be about four or five times that we go through get it all the way up so that it's heated and we take the pink diamond aside from the panther statue which is a event exclusive primary loot this is the best loot, $1.3 million. So we got a $1.75 million loot bag right now, which is crazy. We're now gonna head down over here and we're gonna end up jumping off this balcony, but we gotta wait for the guy at the bottom. You can see in the bottom left-hand screen, there is a juggernaut walking. There is also gonna be one more guard now. So he's gonna take a left, 
You can see he's gonna look down. We're just gonna wait for him to look away. He's gonna eventually look back to the left and that's when we could jump off and we could get out of here. It's gonna take a couple seconds. Good. So now we're gonna jump, land, and we just book it for the exit. Stay off here to the right side so that you're not in their cone of vision whatsoever. And boom, we are done. That is the hardest part, going through the compound, getting your primary target, getting out. We now have a cutscene, and the end is so simple. We'll go over it together. This cutscene's a little long. You have to watch it every single time. It's It was funny the first time you see it, but after that, it's just like, okay. So we are now out of the compound. We're then gonna run over here, take out the guard that's here with the motorcycle. Be very careful, meticulous headshot. And now we're gonna hop on the bike and I would su highly suggest taking this exact route. So you're gonna go here, just right of the helicopter. And now we're gonna go up over the hill and we're gonna end up jumping off or driving off the side of this. Watch out for the trees. The trees will knock you off your bike. So be careful and we are good. Land in the water and now we're gonna swim over here. There's gonna be three of these mines in a triangle. It's important that we swim this way because this shortens the process. So at the far mine right in front of us, right ahead of us, there's gonna be just to the right of it, some like whale bones or something. Um, that's where we're gonna swim to. And once we've hit that, we are going to be done. And make sure you equipped your rebreathers so that you don't drown because that would be bad. And we're done. That is the heist. Of course, unfortunately, we didn't get the footage or I, I do have the footage for the first one, but it got all messed up. But that is technically our first KO Preco heist on the channel. Very simple, very easy. I thought it would take a lot longer not having a sparrow, but it only took what, like maybe an hour and 15 minutes. So pretty quick. If you follow all the tips that I gave, it will really help you along the way as well. But let's see what we got. We had a potential take of 6 million. We ended with 1.54, but we also got the elite challenge because we did it in under 15 minutes. You'll see here, 12 minutes, 47 seconds. We also had zero hacks failed and full loot bags, which means we get an additional $50,000 taking our final take up to just under 1.6 million. That is incredible for only an hour and 15 minutes worth of work. This is why this is by far the best solo money method, at least in the entire game. Probably, the, I would say the best money method, period. It is so easy to do. And they got a beautiful city shot. They're gonna show us our breakdown. 1.59 million dollars, boys. Easy in the bank. And with that, we've made $4 million in this episode, which is incredible. And that means we are ready to purchase the next business for our series. It's gonna be an agency. There are so many ways to make money, but of course the best one is the Dre contract. And we'll be doing all of that and more in the next episode. But before you go, make sure to check this out because this is very interesting.